Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning a second method for adding whole numbers and decimals called the column method. And our learning target for today is I can add whole numbers and decimals to the hundredths place and explain my reasoning. So the column method is best done on a piece of grid paper if you have one. If you don't, I'll show you how to do that in the next slide. So what you want to do is start off by writing in the numbers. So let's say that we have 625 plus 78. You're going to write one number in each box, just like I've done here. And then the place values need to line up. So we have the ones place lining up with the ones place, the tens with the tens, and the hundreds with the hundreds. Just like when we added numbers using the partial sums, and we used expanded notation, this is basically the same thing. So in expanded notation, or in partial sums, we lined up the 20 plus the 70 and the 5 plus the 8. And this way we're just condensing those numbers so that we don't have to write them out longhand in expanded notation, but still adding together the like place values. Okay, so then we're just going to work our way down. And I'm going to add 5 plus 8, and that's 13. 2 plus 7 is 9, and 6 plus 6 is nothing. And it's really 600 that I did here, and really 20 plus 70, because the 9 ends up in the, the tens place. Well, now I have a situation where I can't have two numbers in one place value here. So I'm going to bump over the 10 that I have into the tens column. So this will end up being 3. And then I have really like 90 plus 10. And then still the 6. So I, you know, again here in the tens place, I can't have two digits. So I've rewrite my 3. And now instead of a 9 plus 1 or 90 plus 10, that becomes 100. So I'm going to put a 0 here. And I'm going to add the hundreds over here. Shown in maybe a slightly shorter method, I can do the same thing. And we don't always want to show every single step. So I can do 5 plus 8 is 13, 2 plus 7 is 9, and then 6. And I can just kind of start bumping this over. So 3, 0, and then 7. Now, you might have learned the traditional algorithm for addition somewhere along the way. And really, that's all the column method is. It's just sometimes you can take and actually write that 13 in and the 9 plus 1 here. But showing this in the traditional fashion, we're going to write 625 plus 78. This, might, this method might actually be a little bit easier. So <clears throat> I'll do 5 plus 8 is 13. So I'm just going to write a 1 in here. And I'm going to trade out that 13 because I had a 110. And I'm going to add it right up here. And then I have 2 plus 7 plus 1. So that is 10. It's really 10 tens, which that's 100. But <clears throat> I'm going to kind of think about it as just 10. Write the 0 here for 10. And then I have to carry that one place value over to 7. So sometimes you don't have grid paper handy, and it's helpful to then use some lines to just kind of help you make sure that you have your place values all lined up. <clears throat> so if I didn't have grid paper and I had the problem 72 plus 41, I might actually take and draw a line down, separating those place values, and then I'm going to add together the like place values just like I did before. So 2 plus 1 is 3, and 7 plus 4, which is really 70 plus 40, is 11. Because I don't have any hundreds, I can kind of leave these both in the same column because then the answer becomes 113. Now it's time to pause and practice. So I've given you actually three different numbers here to add together. And I just am guessing that you probably don't have any grid paper at home. If you do, go ahead and pull it out. If not, that's okay. Just use the lines like I showed you to line up the digits to line up the digits of the same place value. 
when you unpause, you'll see the solution. Okay, so here's how I solve the problem. Um, in the problem on the left, <clears throat> I used the column method in more of its traditional form, where I added the 6 plus 7 plus 9, and I got 22. And then 4 plus 3, or 40 plus 30, I got 7 or 70. 6 plus 2 is 8. 600 plus 200 is 800. And then I just bumped this 2 over and added it into the tens column and got 892. And I really did the same thing here, but instead of writing 22 in this ones column, I wrote the 2 and I immediately uh, moved over this 2 into the tens column and just added that in with all of the rest of the tens. Is that what you got? Working with decimals uses the same method. So I wrote out a problem horizontally here. So I have 491 and 3 tenths plus 67 and 14 hundredths. And what we want to do is, I'm just going to start off by writing the first number. So 491 and 3 tenths. I try to make my decimal point nice and big so I can see it. And then I'm going to line up the two decimal points because that is what helps us to line up place values. Because the place values in these two numbers don't match up evenly. So I'm going to start by drawing in my decimal point and fill in everything else. So I have 67 and 14 hundredths. Now you'll notice that in the first number, there's nothing here in the hundredths place. So a nothing in the hundredths place can quickly and easily become just a zero. So I like to put the zero in to make sure that I'm paying attention to that hundredths place and not just ignoring it. Also, it gets us into a really good habit when we are subtracting. So working the same way, we're going to go straight down with this problem. So zero tenths plus four tenths, or sorry, zero hundredths plus four hundredths equals four. 3 plus 1 is 4, and those are tenths. Bring my decimal point straight down. 1 plus 7 is 8. 9 plus 6 is 15. So you can either write a 15 in the box, or you can just write a 5, and bring that 1 straight up here into the hundreds place. And then 4 plus 1, which is really 400 plus 100, becomes 500. So 558 and 44 hundredths. Okay, here's one to pause and practice using decimals. Remember to line the decimals up when you're adding the numbers. When you unpause, you'll see my solution. So I got 54 and 61 hundredths. Is that what you got? If not, remember to line up the decimal points so that we're lining up all of the correct place values together that should solve your problem. Okay, it's time for your quiz. When you're doing these problems, make sure that you do them on paper or on your whiteboard, preferably grid paper if you have it, when you're solving the addition problems. And then the fourth problem, you're going to need to explain why it's important to line up place values when you're adding. Thanks for watching and have a great night.